Well, I'm down here tonight checking out the tapering jig attachment uh, on the Hendy because I've got a guy out in uh, Northern California. He's got a Hendy with the, what looks to be the same tapering attachment on his lathe. And he's selling the lathe. He's got a completely broken apron. Uh, the whole, this whole section right here on his lathe is broken and uh, so he needs this whole section here. So he's given up on that and he's decided to try and sell it. He's trying to get 600 for the whole lathe. And uh, my problem is I don't need a whole nother lathe. Not only that, but he's on the west coast. To move that lathe 3,000 miles would cost a fortune. So that's not, a, uh, not an option. But I did give him a call. I mentioned to him that if he ended up having no luck selling his lathe and he ended up having to scrap it, that uh, I would be interested in buying the tapering attachment parts. So he's had it uh, for sale for about a month, and apparently he hasn't had too many uh, takers at 600. So he called me today to let me know that he's got an individual who's interested in the lathe, but that he only wants to give him 400 for it. And I guess he's got more money tied up in this lathe, and he's trying to get more money out of it. So he's trying to work a deal where he s wants to sell the lathe to this guy for uh, 400 but keep the tapering attachment and sell the tapering attachment to me or the components of the tapering attachment that I need. However, he said that when he uh, looked at the tapering attachment that he doesn't think that he can take the parts off that I need without uh, making the, the lathe unusable. Now, I had thought that maybe the lathe was ready to go from the factory and that the tapering attachment was almost like, by definition as an attachment, that it was an add-on accessory. But apparently, from what I'm uh, figuring out now, it's an integral part of the cross slide uh, mechanism. And so I'll explain that in a moment. So of course this is the part that I wanted to replace that I broke. And um, one of the things I noticed on this was that there's a hole right here. And there's a threaded hole right here. I wondered about what that was for. And then it, after looking at a um, diagram, Oh, I was going to show you the diagram, but I don't have it down here with me. I actually have, uh, through eBay, acquired an original uh, owner's operator's manual for this lathe. Uh, it's a small little paperback deal, and uh, you know it's got basically a lot of information on the cone head version of this lathe, and then some information on the gear head. Uh, but there is a uh, breakdown of all the parts on the tapering jig, and what I discovered is that what's supposed to happen here is there's supposed to be a rod that slides in and out of here and can be adjusted and uh, fixed by a set screw here. And the rod's supposed to come over and actually go through a hole right about here and be attached here. So when I saw that and then I saw the picture of this guy's laid out in California, I realized that it seems like I'm missing something. So sure enough, if I looked at this, came down here, looked at it on the close inspection, I realized that this piece right here, this piece right here originally was supposed to come all the way over here. And in this part of the casting is where that rod went. And it's been ground off or cut off for whatever reason, I don't know. But the tapering jig is still usable without that piece. Matter of fact, the whole rod is actually, the purpose of that rod is it's a depth, a depth stop for cutting tapered threads. Okay, so it'd be a nice thing to have, but it's not necessary. But if I wanted to get this thing back to 100% original uh, with all the parts, I would need this piece that I broke, this piece, which is held on by three screws at the back here, this cover piece, and then the rod. 
he's got the cover piece intact and this piece not broken but he doesn't have the rod we'll worry about the rod later problem is he discovered that when he takes this piece off apparently what happens is the uh, cross slide will not stay fixed because the way this is supposed to work is that when this is on here like this of course this is underneath here anyways it under here what happens is when you tighten this down that clamps the cross slide from being able to move independently of this other part right here so with this loose this piece off and this not clamped what happens is this center block section right here is able to move independently of the rest of the cross slide so I can actually just do this which obviously is not going to fly now, if I tighten this down, I believe, then, yeah, this doesn't move. So that might work. So in other words, this center screw right here, if I loosen this, that allows me to rotate this knob, which allows me to set the taper, okay, to whatever I need to set it at. The question is, if I take if I take this piece off completely and I just tighten this, will that keep that captive? Well, it's one way to find out. I'll just take this off. So I'm going to take this off, this off, and these three screws and take this cover off. Uh, it's worse than I thought. I just took these three screws out only to realize that all they do is hold in a jib in here that I could slide out now. So this piece actually dovetails onto this piece so to take this off I've got to actually slide it off of this which I can't do while it's attached via this bolt to this end flat bar stock here on the end of the the uh, cross slide so this is not looking like this is going to be able to be taken apart. It looks to me like if I leave, if I left him with this piece on his lathe and he clamped this right here, this screw down. I think now, if I'm not mistaken, that should lock that. It moves a little bit, very little though. And actually that movement right there is probably because I just took those jib screws out. The other thing that's interesting is this bolt right here, from what I read, is supposed to be a, uh, a carriage clamp. So I think when you tighten this, it's supposed to lock the carriage down on the ways um, and it doesn't seem to do anything to tighten that all the way and still move this no problem so I don't know what's going on there I'm wondering if that bolt is supposed to go all the way down through to the bottom here and if it's snapped I can actually feel the end of the bolt I want, I'm going to put the camera down so I can turn it no that's weird I can feel the uh, it's turning so it's not it's not snapped off, but for some reason when when I tighten this, it doesn't lock down. It almost seems like there's a part here that should be clamping that, but it's not. What if there's a piece missing there? Oh well, so I could probably get this piece from him, and that's it, which would be pretty much where I started was with this piece intact. Problem is how much he would want for just this piece to make it worth his while to then turn around and sell the lathe to the, uh, the other guy with an incomplete tapering jig. 
I just think this is going to be a, a non-starter as far as this deal goes. Yeah, if he was going to end up scrapping the whole lathe, then I would get this piece. I would get the U-shaped piece. I would probably take the compound if it's in good shape, because mine's got some big chunks taken out of it over here. Um, I would get the hand wheel off of the uh, tail stock, because mine's uh, got a broken handle on it. And uh, he had a face plate. And I would have given him probably a couple hundred bucks plus shipping for all that stuff it would have been worth my while and you know if he was scrapping it anyways it would have been worth his but if he's got somebody willing to buy that thing as it sits with the broken apron for four bills I think he should take it and that's what I'm gonna tell him well I just got off the phone with the guy in California and he said uh, he thinks that he can uh, rig a way to make this work even if uh, even if he were to sell me this piece here. He actually says he already went and did some disassembly of his to see, just to make sure he'd be able to disassemble it and uh, make this work. Um, so what he wants to do is he wants to sell me the entire tapering jig. So now I'm kind of wondering whether or not uh, it would work. I, I need to confirm if it's the same as uh, this one uh, from the photograph he's got. It sure looks like it. So I asked him to take this piece off and look at it, and he says it does have three holes, just like mine. Um, but he said uh, he doesn't see a part number here. I got clearly got a part number there on mine. So I'm going to send him a photograph to show him exactly where the part number is so he can check that out. He said on his that he actually was able to see a uh, serial number stamped on the jig somewhere that matches the serial number of the lathe. Now I know where my serial number is on the way, so I'm going to try and clean this up a little bit more. And then I talked to him about how this piece comes off. Uh, and he said that this bolt right here actually just uh, pops down out of this thing. So it's weird because I don't see how that's going to come out. That's all. I don't know. I don't think that comes out. So maybe he's got a different setup. I think he may have taken this cover off and seen the number under there maybe. So I'm just going to take this bolt out. gear. Take this cover off. Alright. Let me clean that up a little bit and see if we don't see anything. Oh, let me take that other end off because I, I cleaned this up. I don't see anything over here. Might be underneath here. But I'm thinking at this point, why don't I just disassemble this whole thing and run it through the parts washer. Alright, so now I've got that all undone. It appears evident to me that this large headed screw right here is countersunk is the pivot point so I'm thinking if I take that out maybe I could slide this whole bar right out alright so I just remove that big funky screw there and I want to see if this bar will slide oh yeah okay so that alright what I think now I need to do is I need to Loosen up these jib screws. All right, just loosen up the jib screws. Let's see now if that, yeah, that comes right out. Uh, there's the jib. Okay, that looks like that's gonna go in only. Oh, look at that! The jib's even got a part number on it. 601 S57. He mentioned seeing a 60 something number, I think, on one of his parts. Oh, on the underside of this, I believe he said it was stamped, maybe with serial number and also a part number or something. I don't know. Anyways, this will come out now. I'm going to run this right over to the parts washer. Oh, parts washer is doubling as another storage spot. <laughs>